Okay, question number 18a, a diagram that shows a circle with a center of zero or center of O origin, um, zero, zero. The circumference of the circle is 20 lots of pi centimeters. You need to find the equation of the circle. So it's actually not a particularly difficult question if you know uh, that the um, equation for a circle with a center of zero, zero, the origin, is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, all right? Fairly simple formula to remember. That's gonna give you the equation of a circle um, when the center of that circle is zero, zero. Um, we are given the circumference of the circle, so we need to know what r is, and that, that's gonna be able to work, be worked out by knowing that um, circumference is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter. Um, if we find a, find a diameter, we can then find the radius. So just rearrange this circumference, um, which is 20 lots of pi, is equal to pi times the diameter. And then you can divide both sides by pi to get the diameter. So therefore, 20 is the diameter, and therefore 10 is what the radius is, because the radius is always half the diameter. So nice, simple um, number to pop in to r squared there, the equation of the circle is going to be x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared, which is 100, and you don't have to write 100, you can write 10 squared if you want, so 10 uh, x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared. And there's our four marks for that question, pretty simple four marks to be fair, especially compared to the, the next four marks by the looks of things. So b, you've got the line 10x plus py equals q, is a tangent uh, to the point 0.54 in another circle with a center of 0, 0. Uh, find the value of P and the value of Q. So for me, again, it would be useful to have a diagram for this one. We haven't got it because it says a different circle. Um, so I'm just going to draw it on this diagram that we've got up here. You can draw yourself another one. Um, so I'm going to sketch it, 5.4. So 5.4, well, if we remember from this question here, this is 10, isn't it? The radius of this circle is 10. So if we use that scale, roughly, we've got 5 and we've got 4. So we're saying there's a point here, okay, that will draw a circle round that point there. Roughly draw in that circle. Okay, and there's our tangent to that circle. There's the tangent. Okay, so a tangent is just a line that hits a circle at a particular point. So there's a rough sketch of that circle, and what you want to do is think about this line here, right? Now, I know it looks like I've just drawn lots of sketchy lines on a diagram, right? But this is the tangent to the circle. This line from zero, zero to, you know, wherever this is going, uh, this line is the um, perpendicular to the tangent, right? And there's a fact you need to know about the, uh, the gradients of these two lines, okay? So the gradient of the perpendicular to the tangent is the negative reciprocal gradient. Okay, uh, and that's something that you're going to need to know, have to have in your brain in order to be able to answer this question. Um, so we can calculate the gradient of this line, this line we can calculate the gradient of by working out the difference in y and dividing it by the difference in x. Okay, so the difference in y is 4, so I'm going to write down gradient of perpendicular to the tangent. Okay, so the gradient of the perpendicular line to the tangent is four, difference in y, divided by difference in x, over five, four fifths. That means, using our bit of knowledge, our rule, is that the gradient of the tangent 
if it's the negative reciprocal of the perpendicular, it's going to be negative 5 fourths, 5 over 4. Okay, now we've ignored this, this equation for the moment, all right? Um, we've just calculated the gradient of the tangent um, because it's something we're going to need to know. We need to know what that is, right? Even though we've got a gradient in front of this tangent here, doesn't match. It's a bit. It's a bit of a weird question. This one, right? But we'll. I'll come to that in a minute. So um, the the next step would be work out the equation of that tangent. So the equation of the tangent is, and it's a straight line. So it's going to be in the form of y equals m x plus c. So y equals m x plus c. We've got the gradient, and m is representative of the gradient, so uh, we can substitute that in. And we've got a point on that circle, so the point on the circle that goes through that tangent there is, is here. We've got a y coordinate and we've got an x coordinate, so we can substitute those numbers in. So if we were to do that, what we'd get is 4 equals uh, minus 5 fourths multiplied by 5 plus c. Plus c is the thing we don't know yet, so that's the thing we want to find out. That's the y-intercept where this line goes through the y-axis, so this point here. right? Um, so in order for us to do that we need to stick that 5 over 1, multiply these numbers together and we get 25 over 4, but it's negative 25 over 4, uh, plus c, and then we've got 4 still on that side. Now, what we want to do is um, I'll go this way with this bit of work now, so I've got a bit of space. Um, I'm going from here, I'm going to do 4 over 1 plus the 25 over 4, right? And then that equals C. So I've just taken this minus 25 over 4 away from this side by adding it to both sides. And if I add it to both sides, I've got to then work out what this is. So different denominators, got to make them the same. That's going to be 16 over 4 plus 25 over 4, which gives me 41 over 4, which is what C is. So C is 41 over 4, right? So we found the equation, or we found the equation to be y equals minus 5 over 4 because that's what the uh, equa uh, the gradient of the um, tangent is. So y equals minus 5 over 4x plus 41 over 4, right? Now, this is where we can bring this equation back into play, right? So we can then work out what p and q are. If we rearrange this to be in the same form as this, what we get is, and... Uh, what we have to do first is, let me just highlight that, because it's getting a bit messy. All right, so we're interested in this. This is our working out we got to this stage. So I'm going to go over here and just going to do a little bit on the side. Um, so rearrange this, we're going to get uh, PY equals minus 10X and then plus Q. Okay, so our gradient, the what we want for our equation here, our gradient is uh, minus 10, right? And that's not what we've got in our gradient here that we've worked out. So uh, you see there's a, a number in front of the y as well. So if we were to multiply everything through in this equation by 4, what we'd end up with is 4y equals minus 5 plus 41, right? So we're getting there, aren't we? We're nearly there. We've got a number in front of the y. 4y equals minus 5x. Oh, put the x on this one down there. Minus 5x plus 41. All right? Well, the only thing that's not matching up here is this minus 5 and minus 10. So if we multiplied this whole equation by 2, we'd end up with 8y equals minus 10, which is matching now, plus 82. And then if we see here, if we just match this P 
with this a, we're saying we're, this is telling us that p is 8, p equals 8. And you match this q, the plus q, to plus 82, that's telling us that q is 82. And that's a really tricky little question um, at the end of the paper. It's knowing that you can work out the gradient of the tangent um, by knowing the gradient of the perpendicular to the tangent, etc. Uh, it's knowing that straight lines of the equation y equals x plus c. It's knowing you can substitute stuff in, and then we have to scale this equation up to make it match the one that we were given in the question. So it's a real tricky little question for four marks, much harder four marks than the previous four marks. But there you go, and that's how you do it.